Okay, this uh, 100 series Land Cruiser has got AVM uh, freewheeling hubs put on it because it has a part-time uh, four-wheel drive kit from Mark's Adapters in Australia. Uh, now, the issue I'm having with it is that the hubs are on one side are not engaging. Um, so I was just wondering if anyone knew how these operated. So what I'll do is I'll do a bit of a video of replacing the hub. Um, I'm going to have to put the drive plates on there and I'll show you it in bits. Uh, and if anyone knows how these things are meant to go together, that would be quite good. Um, one major issue with these types of hubs is that they're held on, the hub is actually held on with um, Torx 15 bits. Uh, they're just a I'll show you getting them out. <clears throat> uh, they're really hard to get out. They they bind up so easily that you end up snapping the heads off them. Uh, these ones here, I'm actually going to have to drill. I don't know whether you can see in there, but a couple of them, like that one over there, is quite badly chowdered up. Uh, on the other side, to get them loose, I had to put heat onto it, which has um, distorted all this powder coating. But that's the one that doesn't work. This side works. They only sell them in pairs, and of course these AVMs themselves are actually, a, uh, the 100 series comes out full-time four-wheel drive, and so they've had to actually, they make these special order, I'm not too sure what they do to them, whether they try change the drive plate from an 80s, well, the different splines and all sorts, so that it's obviously a bit of a palaver. I've spoke to the manufacturers to get a different type, and I can't, so what I'm going to do is, go back to the old drive hubs until I can get another set or get these ones fixed but anyway I'll um, I'll show the other side okay this is the other side that's not working as you can see I to heat I had to put heat on here to actually get these undone because I had a loose wheel bearing otherwise I wouldn't have bothered but um, yeah so anyway I'll, I'll, I'll pull it apart and I'll, I'll sort of show you the dilemma in the meantime, I'm just going to try and get a recording of the bearing, of the bearing noise and compare it to the other side. So what I've done is I've put the tie back on and squeezed the um, discs, the pads away from the discs so they're not rubbing. And I'll just try and get a noise, try and get a bit of a reading of that. That sounds pretty good to me. I'll check the other side. Um, this does make a bit of a noise driving down the road. I don't know whether it's the hub itself or the bearings. Um, I have got a spare set of bearings to put into this side, but anyway, right, I'll uh, next steps. Okay, so here's the dilemma. Um, it's engaged, hub is engaged. It seems to engage positively, I think. Well, it kind of feels okay, but if we, um, Look at the axle in the background there. No spinny, spinny. So this is the axle obviously here. And that turns freely enough. Um, but she doesn't engage. So I'll pull that apart and we'll have a look in here. Yes, as I said, this is part of the problem. We've got this little wee stupid little head, T15 Torx, on here. Now, I have gone through and loosened all these off. Um, I've only had them apart a week ago, trying to fix this damn thing. But, of course, the other side, I've buggered it up. Anyway, okay, I'll try and explain this concisely. <clears throat> um, that's in the engaged position, so... Uh, in the disengaged position, it actually just slides back, pulls that back flush. If you imagine that uh, the dial turned to two-wheel drive, four by two, it just draws this back in, and then engaged, it releases it. So there's obviously a spring in behind here that does all that. Um, and then I believe that these splines have to line up with the splines there. So those splines there, if you can see that okay, they turn with the, this is all pretty straightforward to most people, and they turn with the axle, 
and the hub rotates independently and this joins the two up and obviously the indentations in there match up with the indentations there which prov also provides a drive as well. Well they're not reaching so I don't know whether I've um, assembled it incorrectly because what happened was um, I had a wheel bearing come really really loose on me and it did something to this hub I believe this the drive flange in here um, it sort of all fell apart okay well look anyway I'll pull this off next and then we'll see if we can diagnose what the problem is right, next thing to do is you take off those 14 mil nuts on there and the little uh, retainers and then take this um, keeper off which I'll need to do both ends should just slide off. Oops. your problem that's just floating yeah okay yeah okay that's come away the hub actually the guts has fallen out of the hub that's what the problem is so um, I'll clean up these parts and I'll show you how it goes and if anyone knows how to actually repair these things that would be good because they are rather expensive actually about five hundred dollars 250 each yeah okay all right next shot should hopefully be it in bits or more in bits right i'll try and explain this i think what's happened is uh, as you can see there's a there's a bronze uh bushing there and I can explain this a bit better with one hand that there's a retainer like a c-clip there that's uh, that's not much use um, but I believe that that is obviously a one-piece unit well it's must be a Preston bronze bushing or something I'll soon now want to take the other half off um, and then you to get them to get the spline out you've got this retainer which you must undo and pull it out I think I don't know but what's happened is I believe is that that face that bronze face there if you can see that I think that's worn right down and is allowing it to not ride properly in here but I'll take the other one off if I can because those T15 a couple of them are buggered so I'm gonna to have to try and drill them out or do something I hope I don't end up butchering it but I think this is a throwaway item I'm gonna put the old drive flanges back on that it come with originally I've still got my parts on four-wheel drive kit and obviously um, but the only thing is the front axle will be turning which kind of defeats a bit of the purpose and the, obviously the diff head so but anyway that's uh, at least I've got to get home I'm going to get out of jail free card, I guess, on that one. Anyway, I'll pull, the, I'll pull the other one apart, and we'll see if that's the problem. If anyone has come across these things before and knows how to rebuild them, I don't even know where you'd get parts from to rebuild them. Okay. Hello, Dusty. What? Anyway, um, that's the original drive flange that they come with. So, funnily enough... Well, not funnily at all, but when I originally did this, I, I've i got some more of these, and they were off my 80 series Land Cruiser, and they don't fit, because the splines are different, and the size of those holes are different. So, when they make these, they obviously get 80 series Land Cruiser ones, this is Mark's four drive adapters, and then they must change the guts of them out to suit that, 
which I'd imagine would be a fair bit of machining. So they probably have to get these flanges, cut them all up, and whoops, and make them fit. Okay, right, I'll carry on. These uh, nuts here get uh, torqued up to 24 foot pounds. You've just got to make sure that you seat this um, C clip. There's a, there's a channel in there, and it can be quite difficult to get that to seat in there quite well. Uh, and that's why I put a 10mm bolt in there, so you can pull out on that with a pair of pliers and then whack that in. But it, it uh, yeah, anyway, as long as that's seated, you're fine. How I was mentioning about these T15s being absolutely bloody appalling. Um, I've had to, there's nothing, there was nothing wrong with this hub. What I've had to do is uh, two of these T15s snap the heads off inside. Well, that's actually a T20. So it snapped the heads off inside. What I had to do is drive a T20 into the ones that weren't snapped off and then use this little uh, contraption here and just undo it and I managed to get those out all but two so what I had to do with those two is use those there and drive them snap the casing and drive them straight through because absolutely no way I could have got those out all I was doing is I've gone through about four T15 heads and about three T20s and that's using heat heating it up CRCing it as you can see I've scorched it a bit absolutely bloody appalling design this so yeah AMV sort your shit out Look at the size of the damn thing, it's pathetic. And as you can see, look, you can't, I've got so much grease and stuff. I put CRC in them. Oh, sorry, I put never seize in them. And they still manage to, to seize up. Um, I don't know whether it's in here, whether they're actually locking in against the aluminium. But what a bloody terrible design. It really, I've never seen anything like it. I mean, you can't help but snap the damn things and I've ended up wrecking the hubs so I'm just going to go back to my uh, yeah, I don't even know if that's oh god yeah, see I'm going to have to do more damage with the old um, there is no oh, yeah, look at that in there I have to pull the wheel off that's sort of all <laughs> I've got two left in here that I've driven through. As you, I don't know if you can see in there, but I've actually there's actually the the head of that one of those T15s has actually been driven through into here because I can't get it out. All right, okay, I have to keep uh, belting things. I think it's as good as it gets. Look at it. Yeah, that's uh, not really acceptable, is it? At least I can um, rip that out of the road and uh, hopefully get the rest of that out. Get the circlip out. If I can't get the circlip out, then there's a circlip in behind here. If you can't get that out, that means you can't get this drive flange off, which means you can't get to your wheel bearings. So... Anyway, I think we're away now. I'll um, I'll bring you back in when I've um, stopped uh, swearing and what have you. I think she. Uh, I, I don't think it works somehow. I think the hub's a bit crook. Oh look at that! Jeez, she come away. Well, that was my thumbnail anyway. Okay, all back together and all sorted. I will be replacing those hubs at some stage in the future. And uh, I can probably rebuild 
out of the two I've got is one good one. Anyway, I'll like uh, we'll go to the bench and we'll see if we can figure out what went wrong. It appears my bench is being used at the moment, so we'll have to resume normal service once this fella's had enough. Oh yes. Right, um, I don't really need to pull this one apart to see why the other one's broken down. Um, so this is the good one. And what's happened with this is that that bit, that brass bush there, um, is, it, goes in, it goes like that way. But what's happened is, it's when the wheel bearing went loose <clears throat> on the truck, it, uh, it got pretty wobbly and it's it's run the housing has run into this and it's worn this away so that's why it keeps falling out if i could get another bush like that that's the same as this one here you can you can make out the bush on the inside of that just uh, there that's the bush there and that's the flanged end but it's meant to have a flanged end on that side as well. On the inside of there. But she ain't there, she's all gone. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's never gonna work. Oh well, mystery solved. I thought maybe I'd, um, because when I pulled this apart the, the other week, um, this was, uh, this was all floppy, you know, all floppy and loose, and I put it back together. I thought I'd fixed it, but obviously not because uh, I couldn't. Um, anyway, yeah. So if somebody knows or has got any one of these ABM hubs lying around, yeah, I'll um, I'll swap it for a few beers. Okay. Anyway, um, no, well, I might have a look at the actual. So these are my hubs. Oh, that's the uh, no, that's the buggered one, isn't it? Yeah, that one looks good, but I actually had to smash some of these holes out. I might be able to fix that. Oh, I see that one there. That one there's buggered, and that one there looks crap, but is actually good. And the reason that's all. Oh, burnt like that is that I had to put so much heat on these things to get these stupid little Torx bits out because uh, the wheel bearing had gone loose again. It's one of the big faults with those 100 series Land Cruisers is the um, the wheel bearings go quite loose on the front of them, uh, especially the passenger side one with the camber of the road and it, uh, yeah, so if you do it up the way that the the, the workshop manual tells you they'll just keep going loose. So I pretty much double everything that they say when it goes to the torque settings. Um, I actually do it up reasonably tight and then just keep an eye on it for the heat. Um, I've put new um, locking tabs and new lock nuts and I've got a 54 millimeter socket. Yeah, they're a bit of a bugger actually. But um, yeah, so anyway, anyway, that's probably about it. There's probably not much point pulling these things apart. Um, yeah. Oh, well, maybe. Maybe I might, I might have a go. Otherwise, I'll just post this on the internet. And uh, for anyone who uh, is interested in these types of things. But a bit of a shame. Those things are 500 and something dollars for a pair. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. Cheers. Okay. Literally is an exploded view. Um, I thought I'd try and take that cap out. Uh, I haven't broken anything. But uh, maybe not. Don't know. Anyway, that's what they look like inside. And then you have a retainer. Well, there's a spring under there. And then you've got this keeper as well that 
so the spring goes in first and wraps around under oh, I'm probably not explaining this very well sort of sits under there like that if you can imagine that's all compressed so that's pushing your that's pushing that bit there into here that's the bit <laughs> I can see what I was doing that's the bit on the diff and this bit here is spring loaded and it pushes this drive onto the spline onto there But she's all pucker rude. Anyway, probably okay for parts. I mean, I haven't actually damaged too much. Um, I enlarged that hole, but it looks all right from the outside. You could, yeah, every, everything's actually rebuildable <laughs> if I can get the parts. And as for this this thing here, that's the one that's flopping around. Um, all I need to do is get another bush made up uh, for that and I can probably salvage all that which I think I might do because I don't really feel like spending 500 odd dollars for a lot of this stuff here um, and I don't do any serious off-roading in that machine of mine so it's a bit disappointing the way that's gone anyway oh well, there you go that's probably it I'll probably wrap this one up and put it on the internet and hopefully um, it enlightens somebody. Uh, I've got some more stuff to put on there about an intermittent fault that's been ongoing with the Land Cruiser, with the injector pump possibly, or the spill valve driver, but yeah. So hopefully I can get that fixed and I'll do a half decent dis uh, description and explanation of what's happened. Okay, take it easy. Bye.